Okay, part two of our chemical reactions series, chemical reaction type series. Um, we're going to focus on the last three types, uh, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. Okay, now I also want you to realize that um, sometimes you're going to see, instead of replacement, you're going to see displacement. Okay, so don't be thrown by that. It's the same thing. Sometimes we say single displacement reaction. Sometimes we say single replacement. So the first uh, chemical reaction type we're going to talk about are single replacement reactions. Um, and this is when one element replaces another element in a compound. So <coughs> I'm going to use our little ABC kind of unknown elements to help you understand. So let's talk about our reactants first. Okay, so we have our reactants, A, B, and C. So when these react together in a single replacement reaction, they yield A and B, C. So if you notice, B is now bound with C instead of with A. So A, B has separated, the bonds have broken, and now A is by itself, and B element is now with C to form a new compound. So our products are totally different from, they are different uh, substances than what we started out with in our, um, in our reactants. Now an example of that would be uh, this reaction on the right here. We have iron. Iron's uh, chemical symbol is Fe because it comes from this word, ferrous, which just means iron. And then this is copper sulfate. Okay, So when iron and copper sulfate react, they yield, their, re, their uh, products are copper and ferrous sulfate. So the copper, which was bound with this sulfate, and you guys already you should know that that should look very familiar to you, that SO4. Okay, now that sulfate has separated from the copper and now it's bound with the iron to form ferrous sulfate. So there's only one element that's being replaced. The copper is being replaced with iron in the iron sulfate. So the lab that we're going to be doing, uh, the materials that you will use for the single replacement reaction lab is a test tube, silver nitrate solution, and you should already know even without me pointing it out, that the silver nitrate formula, chemical formula, is AgNO3. That nitrate should kind of be burned into your brain at this point. And then you also need a small piece of copper wire. So the element that we're going to be looking at in the copper wire is copper, of course. Right, in this procedure, you're going to add some of the silver nitrate to a test tube, and you're going to put the copper wire down into that silver nitrate solution and you're going to observe any changes that you notice and you're going to record those observations. And then later on, at the end of the lab, I'm gonna have you do the uh, chemical formula for this reaction and we're gonna talk about that. All right, uh, the next type of chemical reaction is double replacement or double displacement. And in this case, you've got two things, that's why it's called double replacement, you've got two things kind of switching places. All right, so if we go back to our A, B, C, D, in this one you have A and B elements bonded together and C and D, but your products, what happens when this reaction occurs, your products end up two different, <coughs> excuse me, two ions switch places, okay? So now A and B have separated and C and D have separated, so what happens is A bonds with C now, and B bonds with D. So <coughs> you have a double replacement. Two reactants switch places. Now our example formula, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this reaction formula in a second, but you start out with potassium hydroxide, you should be able to read that already, and hydrogen sulfide, or 
this is also uh, hydrogen sulfate, this is uh, sulfuric acid. Okay, so if they react together, then the hydrogen and the potassium, which are going to be your positively charged ions, they're going to switch places. So there's going to be two um, of the reactants here switching places. So the potassium, which was with the hydroxide ion, is actually going to now bond with the sulfate ion to form potassium sulfate. And the hydrogen ion will bond with the hydroxide to form water. Good old H2O. Now the thing I want you to notice about this reaction formula is that it's not balanced. Okay, The law of the conservation of matter tells us that we don't create or destroy matter in a chemical reaction. So uh, not only do we not have something magically appearing in our products that wasn't in our reactants, like there's no sodium in our, in our uh, reactants here, so there's not going to be any sodium in our products. That's, that's kind of a no-duh, right? But also the amounts, the quantity of the elements involved has to be equal on both sides of the reaction formula. So I'm going to give you a challenge right now to balance this equation. We haven't talked about balancing equations, and that's not going to, you're not going to be tested on that. But just as a little challenge or, you know, a bonus piece, if you can figure out how to balance this equation, I would like for you to show it to me next class. All right, the uh, reaction lab that we're going to do for double displacement, you'll need a test tube and some distilled water, sodium hydroxide, which you guys should know the, the formula when you hear it. It was part of our pH lab as well. Phenolphthalene, which is an, an indicator in this lab, and copper sulfate. So uh, there's going to be a copper sulfate solution and it'll be blue. All right, in your procedure, you're going to put some of the distilled water in a test tube, and then you're going to add some sodium hydroxide, and then you're going to add some of the phenolphthalein to help you as an indicator. And you want to mix that, that uh, sodium hydroxide water and phenolphthalein solution. Just tap really lightly on the side of the test tube. And remember, we're following our safety guidelines for our, all of our science labs. You must be wearing gloves and safety goggles and uh, lab coats and follow any other additional precautions that Mr. Hunt and I prescribe for you when you come to class. So once you've mixed all, all of those, then you're going to write down what you see, what you observe at the beginning. Okay. Then when you add the copper sulfate, a few drops, one at a time, you're going to observe any changes that you see in color or in precipitate formation. And I hope you remember what a precipitate is from our previous video lecture. All right, the final uh, reaction type that we will be talking about uh, in this chemistry lab are combustion reactions. Now, a combustion reaction is, is basically burning. So when hydrocarbons, which um, you should be able to tell just from the name, hydrocarbon, okay, so that means that there's a lot of carbon and there's a lot of a lot of hydrogen as well, okay? Um, when you get into uh, university, especially if you're taking organic chemistry, you're going to study a lot of hydrocarbons because living things um, are really the basic element for living things would be carbon. Um, and so anything that is living or was once living is going to have a lot of carbon uh, within it. Uh, now, coal is a hydrocarbon, and coal is also a fossil fuel, and that just means that it's a fuel. It's something that you can burn to, to uh, produce energy, but the fossil part of it just means that it's the remains of something that was once living. So it would definitely qualify as organic, something that is living. It's not living anymore. But it once was. Uh, coal was actually is actually the fossil remains of a plant. Okay, so coal is a hydrocarbon, and the the purer uh, coal is, like if you get anthracite 
uh, coal, there's like four different quality uh, levels of coal. If you get anthracite, which is the, the highest level of coal, it's going to have a lot more carbon per chain, per uh, molecule, than, um, than say bituminous or lignite coal. Uh, but it is a fossil fuel and it is formed from hydrocarbons. So when a hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen, in other words, when it burns, that's what it's doing, it's reacting with oxygen in the air around it, it produces carbon dioxide. This is the big bad guy that is uh, affecting our climate, remember? Um, and then water is another uh, product or byproduct of the combustion reaction. Now in, in our lab, we're going to be using the following materials, first of all a rubber stopper with glass tubing, a conical flask or an Erlenmeyer flask, that's what this little guy is if you don't remember, uh, tap water, a test tube and a holder, a hot plate, we will be using um, heat so you'll need to wear gloves, uh, and then we'll have some ethanol which is actually a hydrocarbon, it's got a little oxygen in it too, but ethanol is like uh, drinking alcohol. Please do not drink any of the alcohol in the experiment. Thank you very much. And a lighter. In this lab, we, because we are using a heat source and we're also going to be producing an open flame, you need to be very, very careful to follow all safety instructions. All right, so you're going to start by filling the flask with 100 milliliters of tap water, and you're going to put that flask on the hot plate so that it boils, the water inside it boils. And you're going to put some ethanol or the alcohol into a test tube, uh, just a centimeters worth. Okay, and then you're going to close that test tube off with a rubber stopper that has glass tubing running through it. So whatever's in the test tube will be able to escape to the outside. So once the water is boiling, you're going to put that test tube uh, down into the mouth of the flask. Of course, you're going to use a test tube holder because it'll be hot. And uh, you're going to make sure that you point the, the mouth, the glass tubing, away from people because uh, we don't want to be on fire. Now, it's not going to be this cool. You're not going to have this massive flamethrower coming out of your test tube. But we, will, uh, we do hope to see some flame when you... Um, use the lighter to light up the end of the, of the uh, glass tubing and you're going to record what you see. So this will be our combustion reaction type lab uh, and make sure that you observe everything that you that you record everything that you observe so that you can uh, do the closing activities on all of these labs. All right, so I hope uh, that you understand the different types of reaction types. Be sure that you review the procedures, the materials, and all before you come to class so that you can be safe and be ready to go when you get here. Thank you.